All right, I want to run. I want to run through two quick examples. So, let's say we have a drum. It's big, heavy, solid, and it's fixed. It has a radius r. So the moment of inertia of our drum is one half the mass of the drum times the radius squared. And let's say we wrap a string around it. And to that string, we hang a mass equal to the mass of the drum. Now, what we want to look, what we want to do is find the acceleration of the mass and find the tension. So, in order to find the acceleration of the mass, we need to look at a free body diagram of each object. First one, we have the mass of M. It has the tension in the string pulling up and weight pulling down. And it's going to accelerate down. So right off the bat, we can say that MA is equal to <clears throat> MG minus the tension. That's great. If the tension is zero, then the acceleration is equal to gravity. But this drum doesn't want to spin, which is going to give us tension in our string. So we need to look at the drum. That's too small. So we need to look at our drum. That is the same size. Um, so looking at the drum, we have this force of tension pulling down. I'm not going to worry about all the forces that are acting right at the center. I keep it fixed. Now, we know that torque is equal to radius times a force, and we're interested in the perpendicular force. That's what we're always looking for. So this tension is perpendicular to my radius and it's a distance of r away. So this tension gives me a torque of that radius times the tension. And looking at this, it's going to make the thing spin this way, giving it an angular acceleration of alpha. So the sum of the torques here equal the moment of inertia of my drum times the angular acceleration and that's equal to the one torque acting on this system, radius times the tension. So what we're going to do is figure out how to combine these two, because we don't need tension hanging around, uh, to find the acceleration. So again, we're going to say uh, the moment of inertia is 1 half mr squared going to multiply that by the angular acceleration a over r and that's equal to r times the tension so all of those r's go away and I've got one half m a is equal to tension well when I add those up they all cross out and I've got tensions all cross out and I have 3 halves MA is equal to MG. My M's go away at this point and my acceleration is equal to two-thirds gravity. Now, acceleration and alpha are, are closely related to each other because they still have to share that same property. The string goes out that's what gives me this acceleration here, but it also spins this thing around. It's a non-slip condition. Here we go. In the non-slip condition, I can say that the acceleration is equal to r times alpha. So as long as that string is not slipping on the drum, I can use this relationship. That's what allowed me to do this. Now that we have the acceleration, we just come back to one of these equations to find the tension. 1 half ma is equal to the tension. So 1 half m times 2 
thirds G is equal to the tension. So we get twos to go away and that tension is equal to one-third of our weight. But it's wrapped around the drum so it's slowing down. Okay, so what giving the pulley mass does is give us one more equation to use. It throws in one more unknown, it gives us one more equation. So let's look at an Atwood's machine kind of example just to get things down. So let's say we have uh, a big disk. The moment of inertia of the disk is, let's just get, well, let's stay simple, one half mr squared. And we're going to attach to that mass of 2m, and on the other side, a mass of 3m. What we want to do is find the acceleration. So, we see here that we have tension 1 pulling up, tension 1 pulling down on the pulley here, tension 2 pulling up here, tension 2 pulling down on the pulley there, 2mg pulling down on this side, and 3mg pulling down on that side. Now, tension 1 and tension 2 both give us torques because they're acting on this pulley. Torque 2 is equal to the radius of that thing times tension 2. And torque 1 is equal to the radius times tension 1. So now we can construct our 1, 2, 3 equations, which is a little tougher than what we had before. So our first one, um, 2m times the acceleration is equal to, let's say we're accelerating up here, accelerating down here, and that's my angular acceleration. 2m times the acceleration is equal to tension 1 minus 2mg. Our second equation, we have 3ma is equal to 3mg minus t2. And again, if we look at this, since these tensions are different, I cannot add them together and cross them out, and we need to look at our third object, which is um, the pulley. I alpha is equal to, now torque 2 is going with our angular acceleration, sorry, torque 2 is going with our angular acceleration, and torque 1 is going against it. But number 3 is not a workable equation. So we should plug everything in that we know about it. I is 1 half mr squared. Alpha is A over R because we have our non-slip condition. Torque 2 was R times tension 2 and torque 1 was R times tension 1. So looking at this, um, all of the R's cancel out. And I can add these together. Uh, torque 1, tension 1 and negative tension 1, tension 2 and negative tension 2 cancel out. And so I have 2MA plus 3MA plus half m equals 3mg minus 2mg. Sorry, 1 half m a equals 3mg minus 2mg. So this is 5 and a half or 11 halves m a equals mg. So my acceleration is equal to 2 elevenths the acceleration due to gravity. 
Um, Newton's second law problems with torque are as easy as adding this extra equation because this thing now has mass.